the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were at that time without Christ, alienated from the community of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with his commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God, in one body, through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, Glory dwelling in our land. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him. And salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. 
Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his return. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today our mass intention is for all those parents of school age children in this time of virtual schooling. We pray that the parents and their teachers may be blessed with the patience and the resourcefulness to make online lessons fruitful and successful. Friends, over the past few days, our first reading at our daily Mass has been coming from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is a statement about the Church, where the division between Jew and Gentile is removed, and all are one in Christ. Paul says, Now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So the unity of all in Christ is modeled on a building, and not just any building. It's modeled really on the temple, the dwelling place of God. This is a wonderful image of unity and fraternity. And this calls to mind the recent encyclical of Pope Francis, which speaks of fraternity and social friendship. At one point in that encyclical, he speaks of recovering kindness, recovering kindness. Let's listen to what he has to say about recovering kindness. He says, other persons come to be viewed simply as obstacles to our own serene existence. We end up treating them as annoyances and we become increasingly aggressive. This is even more the case in times of crisis, catastrophe and hardship when we are tempted to think in terms of the old saying, every man for himself. Yet even then we can choose to cultivate kindness. Those who do so become stars shining in the midst of darkness. St. Paul describes kindness as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. He uses the Greek word krestotes, which describes an attitude that is gentle, pleasant, and supportive, not rude or coarse. Individuals who possess this quality help make other people's lives more bearable, especially by sharing the weight of their problems, their needs, and their fears. This way of treating others can take different forms. For example, an act of kindness, a concern not to offend by word or deed, a readiness to alleviate their burden. It involves speaking words of comfort, strength, consolation, and encouragement, and not words that demean or sadden or anger or show scorn. He goes on to speak of kindness. He says, kindness frees us from the cruelty that at times infects human relationships, from the anxiety that prevents us from thinking of others, from the frenetic flurry of activity that forgets that others also have a right to be happy. Often nowadays we find neither the time nor the energy to stop and be kind to others, to say, excuse me, or pardon me, or thank you. Yet every now and then, miraculously, a kind person appears and is willing to set everything else aside in order to show interest, to give the gift of a smile, to speak a word of encouragement, to listen amidst general indifference. If we make a daily effort to do exactly this, we can create a healthy social atmosphere 
in which misunderstandings can be overcome and conflict forestalled. Kindness ought to be cultivated. It is no superficial bourgeois value, precisely because it entails esteem and respect for others. Once kindness becomes a culture within society, it transforms lifestyles, relationships, the way ideas are discussed and compared. Kindness facilitates the quest for consensus. It opens new paths where hostility and conflict would burn all the bridges. Pope Francis, in his recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, on fraternity and social friendship. So friends, let us focus on recovering and promoting friendship, kindness in our life today. Let us pray. We put again our needs before the Lord and we ask the Lord to bless the church, that community of which Paul speaks in the Ephesians, where the walls of division are torn down and we are all asked to be built into that temple where God dwells, that we may be that temple where God dwells. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Francis, our Pope, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of Christ, the Good Shepherd. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those parents and teachers who are engaged in virtual teaching and learning, that their efforts may be blessed with patience and with success. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we may be protected from hurricanes this season. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Well, as we put our needs before the Lord, we pray for all those who have been infected with COVID-19, that they, they, be, they may be brought to healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving for all those who have been healed of COVID-19. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all those who, by their profession, by their vocation, must care for those infected with COVID-19, the doctors, nurses, and allied health workers, that they may be protected from infection themselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we may all be protected from hurricanes this season. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we put now our needs before you as we pray in silence. For all these things we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and grant our needs in accord with your will and keep us grateful and faithful to you always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, Father. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, Father, and the living of his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become a source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and added willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with me, O unworthy servant, with all the bishops, the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom is the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. For the benefit of all those joining me virtually, we make our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in the heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.